Welcome to Wednesday in the Word. I am so very glad to welcome you to the study of the Word of God. Today is the 18th of May, and if you are going uh, through the Bible with us in the one-year study Bible, I want you to turn to May 18th because I'm going to do a study uh, from 1 Samuel uh, chapter 22, beginning with verse 1, and continuing through the 23rd chapter through verse 29. I trust the last week has been a good week for you. It is always good to see so many of you uh, as you enter church on a Sunday morning, and let me give you a very special invitation to be with us this week. Uh, either at the 9 o'clock service or at the 11 o'clock service. And uh, let me remind you that uh, we have a Sunday school class on uh, Sunday mornings uh, at uh, 10.30. And if you are available, come and be with us. Uh, it is in person and it is in the conference room uh, on the upper level of the church. And it would be a delight for me uh, to have you with us. Please know that you're in our prayers. We're praying for your health. We're praying for the blessing of God to be upon you. I believe uh, that you can claim uh, Psalm 1. Uh, psalm 1 is a favorite psalm of mine. It talks about the blessed person. And uh, those that know God, that walk in the ways of God, they have found out, as I have found out, that God's blessings indeed follow you, and God gives to you uh, blessings that are beyond any description whatsoever. And so my prayer is that God would indeed bless you. As we prepare to go into the study today, I first want to lead you in prayer. And there is so much to pray about. Um, we continue to pray for the situation uh, in Ukraine. And we pray that God would divinely intervene and that God would be with the Ukrainian people. So many that have fled their country have found a refuge in Poland and in Romania and some of the other countries. And um, I just pray that God would bring an end to this horrible conflict. And then over the weekend, we suffered two uh, mass shootings and tragedies in Buffalo, New York, in which uh, a deranged individual, 18 years old, hard to imagine, 18 year old, would drive 200 miles to Buffalo to a predominantly African-American uh, section of the city and enter into a grocery sh a store and systematically kill 10 people, uh, ranging in age from their 30s into their 80s. And uh, this was a person that identified themselves as a white supremacist. And when we look at the hate that is in our society, the politicalization uh, that you see on every hand, and I just want to encourage you, as a Christian, be kingdom-minded. Don't be a political-minded individual. I, I look at so many people, and politics is all they can talk about. But if you can be kingdom-minded, and uh, get out of this realm in which politics consume you because there is so much negativity that you find. And then there was uh, the shooting in California in a Presbyterian church where a group of uh, Chinese uh, American Christians were gathered together and uh, another individual entered into the room uh, where they were having a luncheon and started shooting. If it had not been for the bravery of the pastor and the congregants 
only God knows how many people would have lost their lives as it were as it was one was killed in that melee so we need to pray as never before we need to pray that God would intervene and that God would undertake for our nation uh, one of the things that I earnestly pray for is a revival in our nation that God would speak one more time and that he would bring revival and that the hearts and the minds of people would be turned back to God and that there would be love and honor and kindness that would be shown among individuals. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for the day that you have given to us. On this 18th day of May, as we are recording this, what a beautiful day it is. Uh, the humidity has dropped. It is a perfect uh, sunny day, uh, cool, and we give you praise for such a wonderful spring day. We understand that every good and every perfect gift comes from you. You are the giver of life. And Lord, we do not take life for granted, for life is so very fragile as we uh, witnessed over this past weekend. We pray for those that were bereaved as a result of the mass shooting in uh, Buffalo. I ask God that you would be with those families. I pray that you would strengthen them. I pray that you would bring comfort to them. But I pray for our nation. I pray, O oh God, that, that hatred would be driven from the hearts of people. And we know that can only happen when Jesus becomes Lord and Savior. And the Prince of Peace uh, speaks peace to the turbulence that is in the lives of people. For those in California and all across this nation, because uh, mass shootings have become commonplace, and we don't even hardly blink an eye anymore when we hear of mass shootings. Lord, please do not let violence become commonplace. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We ask God that you would intervene. We pray for the blessing of Almighty God that you would bring an end to this horrible conflict. Touch the heart of Putin, dear God. Lord, I pray that the Russian people would rise up in opposition against him. We pray, Heavenly Father, for the Bible study today, that you would bless the Bible study. How very much do I realize I need you. I am unable to teach. I am unable to bring the word of God without the anointing. And so I pray for the anointing of Almighty God. And Lord, we give you the praise and we give you the glory and we give you the honor because it is in Jesus' name that we do pray. And amen. Turn with me, if you will, to 1 Samuel chapter 22. I just read this uh, for the devotion this morning in the one-year study Bible. When you reach uh, 1 Samuel, <clears throat> Saul is still the king of Israel. He is the first king of Israel, and he is from the tribe of uh, Benjamin. When you have reached this particular passage, uh, you find that David comes into play. David has already confronted Goliath and he has killed Goliath. And you notice that the songs are being sung. Saul has killed his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. At this particular point, uh, Saul has lost his mind, literally. Uh, he has become demon-possessed, and he is driven by jealousy. He is driven by hatred, and he is consumed with getting rid of David that he sees as uh, someone who is going to take the throne. In fact, 
David has already been anointed as the next king, and he is king and waiting. There is a lot that's going to take place before David will become the actual king of Israel. But when you turn to this particular passage of Scripture, David has married Saul's uh, youngest daughter, and um, Saul is out to kill David, and he has escaped and, uh, from Jerusalem. And as you see in this passage, he left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. Uh, and I read this passage of scripture and I thought to myself, he needed a hiding place. And Adullam, which is a cave, became a hiding place. It was in the desert. One of the things that, that I have found out in my life, I need a hiding place. There are times that I just need to escape, get away, be alone by myself and uh, draw myself into a place where I can surround myself with the presence of Almighty God. Where this study is being recorded and my office at my home is a hiding place. This is often where I retreat and I spend time alone with God in prayer and in the study of his word. Let me ask you, do you have a hiding place? Do you have a place of retreat? Uh, the pressures of life, those things that consume you, if you do not find a hiding place, the enemy is out to destroy you. And you have to get away and say, Lord, I just want to spend time alone with you. Now, during this time where David is fleeing uh, for his life, escaping from Saul, who is trying to take his life, one of the things that came to mind is his care of his parents. You see, it was not just David that was in harm's way. Uh, David that had the possibility of being killed, but his parents uh, were also in danger. And David cared for his parents. He looked out for his parents. Look with me in 1 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 3. The Bible says, From there David went to Mizpah and Moab and said to the king of Moab, Would you let my father and mother come and stay with you until I learn what God will do for me? So he left them with the king of Moab, and they stayed with him as long as David was in the stronghold. So notice a couple of things. The cave of Adullam became the stronghold. The wilderness of Judea actually became a stronghold for David. But he took his parents across the Jordan uh, River over to the area of Moab. Now, this is the same place that Naomi uh, went with her husband Elimelech and found refuge uh, when there was a famine in the land. It's the same area that Ruth was from. And so David goes over to Moab and <clears throat> he asks uh, the people of Moab, the king of Moab, if his parents could stay there as long as he was in the stronghold. And uh, this uh, points out so clearly that David had a love for his parents. He did not abandon his parents. He took care of his parents. One of the things that is so very important is that uh, we have strong families. That is uh, such a strong principle that should be in the life of Christians, that you care for your parents, you love your parents, uh, you look after your parents, and that you nurture your parents as they have nurtured you when you were a child, and that you keep a strong connection as far as your family is concerned. Now, the next thing I want you to know 
in the life of David, and you find it throughout this time, particularly when he is fleeing from Saul, is the leading of the Lord in David's life. So if you come to verse 5 of 1 Samuel chapter 22, we are introduced to a prophet by the name of Gad. And Gad said to David, do not stay in the stronghold. Go into the land of Judah. So David left and went into the forest of Herod. Um, it is important that you have someone who can speak into your life spiritually. And there are a number of people throughout the life of David that speaks into his life. At this particular point, that was a prophet by the name of Gad uh, that knew the mind of God, knew the will of God, and spoke that to David. Uh, it is so very, very important that you identify mentors in your life, that you identify people that can speak into your life and give you spiritual direction. Now, you don't depend upon them as though they were uh, fortune tellers. Uh, you listen to them as they listen to God. And of course, anything that someone tells you uh, you judge it by the very word of God and by the spirit of God. But in this particular case, Gad knew the will of God. He spoke into David's life and he told him to leave uh, from the wilderness and to go back into the land of uh, Judah. <clears throat> now, you come to verse 6. Saul heard that David and his men had been discovered. Here you're going to find the persistence on the part of Saul to try to seek David out and to kill him. Saul was seated spear in hand and under the tamarisk tree on the hill of Gibeah and all his officials standing at his side. And he said to them, listen, men of Benjamin, will the son of Jesse give all of you fields and vineyards? Now, look what Saul is doing. He is from the tribe of Benjamin. He is talking to men from the tribe of Benjamin, and he's accusing them of siding with David, who was from the tribe of Judah. And he says, do you think that David is going to reward you, that he's going to give you uh, what you need? He said, uh, he accuses them of conspiring against him. And he said, none of you is concerned about me or tells me that my son has incited my servant to lie in wait for me as he does today. So you see uh, the paranoia on the part of Saul toward his own people, toward his son. We can get to a place where we absolutely become paranoid about the situations and we look at everything in a worst case scenario. Uh, one of the things that I would suggest to you, uh, do not allow the devil to feed into your mind, to cause you uh, to become paranoid and that you think that everybody is against you. The fact of it is, David was not Saul's enemy. Uh, Saul had made David in his mind the enemy. Uh, but the next thing I want you to notice is that there is this man by the name of Doeg that we are introduced to in verse 9, and he is a Edomite. So if you go across Jordan, you have Ammon, or Ammon and you have Moab, and then you have Edom, and he is from Edom. He is an Edomite, and he is going to feed into um, Saul's paranoia. In fact, he was at the tabernacle when David was escaping and came to the priest and asked for bread and for food, and 
the priest gave him uh, the sacred loaves and gave him the sword of Goliath. And uh, Doeg, uh, he said, I saw the son of Jesse come to Ahimelech and, uh, at Ahitab, uh, at Nob. And Ahimelech inquired of the Lord and also gave provisions and the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. Now, what I want you to notice next is the irreverence of Saul and the lack of fear that Saul has. It is a terrible thing when we reach the place of irreverence or that we have a lack of fear of the Almighty. Uh, one of the things that, that is so very important, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. To walk in fear of God, to walk humbly before God, to walk softly before God. Now, Saul, when he started off, and certainly he did, but something has happened. There has been this uh, progression toward evil. He is no longer walking in the fear of God. And there is this irreverence that is in the heart of Saul. And there is this uh, lack of the fear of God. And because he finds out that Ahimelech, the priest, had provided for Jesse. Now, notice, uh, Ahimelech did not know that uh, David was fleeing from Saul. He did not know the situation that existed between David and Saul. Then the king, in verse uh, 11, sent for the priest Ahimelech, the son of Ahitab, and all the men of his family, who were priests at Nob, and they all came to the king. And Saul said, Listen now, son of Ahitab. Now listen to what he is going to do. Saul said, why have you conspi conspired against me, you and the son of Jesse, giving him bread and a sword and inquiring of God for him, so that he has rebelled against me and lies in wait for me as he does today? Now, what does Saul do next? He orders the execution of the high priest. He orders the execution not only of the high priest, but his entire family. What a horrible thing is taking place. This man who had walked humbly before God has now gotten to this place where he is willing to turn against the very priest of God. Now, Ahimelech the priest said to Saul, Who of all your servants is as loyal as David? the king's son-in-law, captain of your bodyguard, and highly respected in your household. Was that day the first time I inquired of God for him? Of course not. Let not the king accuse your servant of any of his father's family, for your servant knows nothing at all about this whole affair. But notice what Saul does. The king said, you will surely die, Ahimelech, you and your whole family. He orders the guards at his side to turn and to kill the priest of the Lord. But notice, they have more fear of God, and they refuse to do so. The Bible says, but the king's officials were unwilling to raise a hand to strike the priest of the Lord. And then he turns to Doeg, the Edomite, who has no fear of God. And for whatever reason, he sides with Saul, and he himself turns and strikes down the priest. And according to the word of God, he killed 85 men, 85 of the priest. But there is one priest that is going to escape. He is the son of Ahimelech, and that is Abiathar. He escaped, 
and he fled and joined David. Now, if you go down with me to chapter 23, and I want to pick up and begin to read. When David was told, look, the Philistines are fighting against Keilah and alluding to threshing floors, he inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I go and attack these Philistines? Notice, he is constantly inquiring of the Lord. He doesn't do anything unless he inquires of God. In your daily life, in your daily decisions, are you asking God, lead me, guide me, direct me, help me to make the right decisions? And the Lord answered him, go attack the Philistines and save Keilah. But David's men said to him, here in Judah, we are afraid. How much more than if we go to Keilah against the Philistine forces? Once again, Notice, David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered him. I believe with all of my heart, when you walk before God, and you daily seek the Lord, and you ask for his guidance, and you ask for his direction, as surely as I'm speaking to you in this Bible study, God will guide, he will lead, and he will direct your life. One of the things you will find they go and they defeat the Philistines. Uh, and when you come down uh, to verse 9, when David learned that Saul was plotting against him, Saul is still plotting against him, he said to Abiathar, the priest who is escaped, bring the ephod. David said, Lord God of Israel, your servant has heard definitely that Saul plans to come to Keala and destroy the town on account of me. Will the citizens, these people that he has saved, will they surrender me? And he found out, yes, they would surrender him. And uh, verse 13, so David and his men, and the Bible said there were about 600 in number, left the, count, uh, the town of Keilah and kept moving from place to place. When Saul was told that David escaped from Keilah, he did not go there. But David, according to verse 14, stayed in the wilderness strongholds and in the hills of the desert of Zip. Sometimes there is a point in your life that you are in limbo. You find yourself in a desert. You find yourself uh, fleeing. But don't worry. God has a plan. God is on your side, and he will bring you out, as we find in the life of David. And uh, the Bible said, uh, day after day, Saul searched for him, but God did not give David into his hands. So the protection of Almighty God. One thing that I am certain of, that God will protect that which belongs to him. The angels of the Lord surround those that fear him. And God will keep you in the hollow of his hand. And when you need encouragement, God will provide the encouragement. Because you come to verse 15, and at this particular moment, the friend of David comes to encourage him. It says, while David was at Horish in the desert of Zip, he learned that Saul had come out to take his life. And notice, Saul's son, Jonathan, uh, came to David, and he's going to help David, and help him find strength in Almighty God. Notice, Saul, who was seeking David's life, his son, Jonathan, they had entered into a covenant with each other, and Jonathan comes to David, and he helps him find strength in God. The Lord has someone in your life, a friend, who will come to you in the time of need and give you a word that you need. 
he was a friend to David. Friendship is so very, very important. Most of us, we think, well, I have lots of friends, but let's be honest. Most of us can count our friends on one hand. And in the case of David, he had a friend that was the son of his enemy that helped him find strength in the Lord. When you may be at your woe place, there is someone who can come alongside of you, encourage you, and give you words that lift you up and you find strength in Almighty God. Then, as we come to the next part, I want you to notice, uh, you come down to verse 19, the Ziphites went up uh, to Saul at Gibeah and said, Is not David hiding among us in the strongholds of Horish on the hill of Hakala, south of Jasamon? Now, your majesty, come down wherever it pleases you and do so, and we will re be responsible for giving him into your hands. But, so, poor David, there are so many people that are conspiring against him. Uh, we continue to read in verse 21, Saul replied, The Lord bless you for your concern for me. Go and get more information. Find out where David usually goes and who has seen him there. Tell me he is very crafty. Find out about all the hiding places he uses and come back to me with definite information, then I will go with you if he is in the area and will track him down among all the clans of Judah. So here you see Saul in hot pursuit against David. And as you read, it seems that David is trapped at that particular point in his life. We continue to read in verse 24, so they set out and went to Ziph ahead of Saul. Now David and his men were in the desert of Maon in Arabah, south of Jasmine. Saul and his men began to search, and when David was told about it, he went down to the rock and stayed in the desert of Maon. And when Saul heard this, he went into the desert of Maon in pursuit of David. Let me tell you, the devil doesn't give up. You know, you might flee to one place only to find that the enemy is in hot pursuit against you. We have an enemy of our soul, and the enemy of our soul is out to destroy us. In fact, I couldn't help but, and today is devotion, because the New Testament reading is in John chapter 10, verses 1 through 21, and in John 10, 10, the Bible says the thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And how true it is, the devil comes to, kill, to steal, kill, and to destroy. The enemy has a plan, and it's not good as far as your life. But God is our protector. God is our shield. God is the one who will take care of us. Now, in the moments that we have left, I want you to notice how good God is to David and what he does to save David from the enemy. We go back uh, to 1 Samuel and uh, verse 26 of uh, this chapter 23. And the Bible says, Saul was going uh, along one side of the mountain, and David and his men were on the other side, hurrying to get away from Saul. As Saul and his forces were closing in on David and his men to capture them, and so it seemed like a certainty that David would be captured. But notice, at that point, a messenger came to Saul saying, Come quickly, the Philistines are raiding the land. Then Saul broke off his pursuit of David and went to meet the Philistines. That is why they called this place 
Sheila Hem Makala. And David went up from there and lived in the strongholds of Engedi. In the nick of time, was it coincidental that uh, the Philistines were invading the land and Saul had to be called away? I don't believe so. I believe it was God at that particular point had the Philistines invade and Saul had to be called away. Otherwise, David could have been captured. But that's not the end of the story. It will continue. I don't know what you're pursuing from or ex trying to escape from today. I don't know what pressure you may be under, but I want to tell you, if God be for you, who can be against you? You may find yourself in flight, but God has a way of protecting that which is his. So don't worry. Don't fear. Just as God protected David, God will protect you. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, the enemy of our soul would try to pursue us and overtake us. But God, you have put a shield round about us to keep us. And in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are listening. May you be a shield to them and protect them and keep them. In the lovely name of Jesus, I pray. And amen and amen. May God bless you until we meet again.